All right, you need to know which vein's there because you have to take a look at the way that it is. If you have, if you have an IV going in that's, uh, that's downstream from your collection site, you're gonna have major problems because the lactate is getting in from where your blood draw is. So you have to do some research. You also have to know uh, intravenous drug users. It doesn't take a rocket scientist that if you see track marks that are there, don't go there and try and draw someone's blood from that same exact area because what you're gonna do is because they're not phlebotomists themselves, they're, I guess, uncertified phlebotomists, that at the end of the day, they can, they can introduce things into the, into the general area and, and confuse the result. Very important here, and this is something that took me a while to understand and to recognize. To understand and recognize is how important cleansing is, cleansing of the site. We've all had our blood drawn at some point in time in our life, and next time you have your blood drawn, I want you to watch the way the person does it. Okay. It's not just an infectious diseases thing, it is getting the right result because of what I, what's called candida albicam. Okay, this is what they always do. They scrub up and down and back and up and down and everything like that. All right, that's completely the wrong way of doing it. What they should do is what's called concentric circles, meaning that they take it from the center point and then they spiral outwards. The reason why that's important is just good old fashioned common sense. Once you imagine you have mud on your arm, you go take your washcloth and you just scrub it up and down you're not cleaning your arm. But if you sit there and you start in the middle and you push it away, you're cleaning it. Okay, it's no different with the mud versus that organism that's called Candida albicans. So you have to be aware of that. And you can ask the open-ended question. I hate open-ended questions, but with a phlebotomist, how did you cleanse it? Give them a pad, have them do it in front of the jury. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna go like this, unless you cross-examine them before. They're gonna go like this. You just got your defense. Candida albicam is a particular, I have to skip over these because I want to get to Candida albicam. Oh, hospitals are notoriously septic environments. Um, people go there to die. People don't go there to, you know, it's not like Howard Hughes and, and uh, you know, meticulously well kept. If your hospital is, um, no matter what they do, there's staph infection, there's all sorts of issues. And it comes back to Candida albicam, which I'm going to talk about here. Expiration date, everything's got an expiration date. You take a look at the box. The box has an expiration date on the outside. The tube has one. This is what the magic box looks like, again, with all its components that are there. I know I have to buzz through it. I apologize. But this is what I wanted to get to. This is a particularly nasty organism. It's called Candidus albicam. It's yeast. It's everywhere. It's on everything. It coats your apple. You know, it, it, it's, it's basically everywhere. It's benign, generally benign, except for the DUI defendant. To the DUI defendant, it is deadly. And the reason why it's deadly is because of what it is. If you, re if you remember, we were talking about different concentrations of potassium oxalate and sodium fluoride. Okay, three conditions must be present for the formation of alcohol in the tube that is not your client's fault, but neoformation of alcohol, it's called. Okay, so that means, all right, it might be your client's fault that he's a 0.04, but if candida albicam happens in here, it can inflate it to above that magic threshold number. Through no fault of your client's behalf, but because of things that he trusted other people to do, such as cleaning his arm right, such as storing it in the refrigerator the right way, such as having the correct amount of sodium fluoride. Three conditions must be present. There must be a sufficient and the right type of organisms. Well, I told you folks, candida albicans is everywhere. You can't get away from it. So we got number one. Number two, appropriate substrate and food. Okay, what Candida albicam eats is glucose. Guess what has glucose? Blood. So we have both of those things being present. The third one is the appropriate temperature for growth. If it is well refrigerated, if there is proper inversion of the tube where these additives are mixed, then you're not going to have a Candida albicam defense. But most of the time that I see is that the, the technologist, the, the phlebotomist, gives it back to the police officer, he puts it back in his car, and you know, who the hell knows when he gets it into a refrigerator. Is that refrigerator one that has an alarm on it, um, that's well contained and well maintained and, and taken a look at as it probably should be? Of course not. Um, where does it go and what does it do? So it's actually relatively easy to find a lack of proper temperature or it's traceable. Anyone remember? Um, Pac-Man. Okay. All right. In case you didn't know what Pac-Man is.
Okay, Candida albicans is just like Pac-Man, and here's why. Because you have to think about it this way. Pac-Man is Candida albicans, that organism. The ghosts are glucose. The flashing dots in the corner that energizes Pac-Man is the lack of refrigeration. Just like in the game itself, it's only when Pac-Man eats the flashing dots that Pac-Man can eat the ghosts. However, instead of it killing the ghosts in our version of Pac-Man, it emits out ETOH at the end of the day. So it eats glucose, which is in the blood, and it poops out ethanol or alcohol at the end of the day. It is particularly scary because there is not the most complicated uh, analytical device, meaning the GC or even now what's called the HPLC, which we didn't talk about here, cannot tell the difference between when this happens or not. It is impossible for the machine to tell what alcohol is there because your client drank it or happened due to this transformation of ethanol that happens because of candida albicam. Very scary stuff. Okay, sometimes they don't use non they use non-alcoholic swabs that are there. And sometimes they don't have the providone iodine. They go to beta sep. Beta sep is used in a, in a hospital environment all the time. But if you have to be really diligent and take a look at it, because what can be there is in the active ingredients, isopropyl alcohol. If you can't show me the separation, how can I tell whether or not it's ethanol versus isopropyl alcohol?